What's up guys, welcome back to another video. So today I'm playing with the uh, high noon skin, the new skin, not a prestige one. And I'll tell you guys my thought process about the skin in a bit. But this is just a game that I played recently and I wanted to review it to tell you guys my thought process and all that. So first of all, I knew I wanted to path to top because top is both melee champions, they're very close range, which means they want to trade a lot. And you could argue, oh, you have Rel, bot lane with Ignite and Flash, she can engage. They have weak bot lane, you can probably kill them. I disagree. So if you think about matchups, both Jinx and Smolder want to scale. But Milio Q can just stop Rel W, engage. And uh, like even though it is possible to gank bot, it's pretty difficult to gank Milio in general. And top is like more, se more secure about how they want to play. It's like more consistent. So level 1, I wanted to start bot lane and path to top. So I just stayed in the raptor area to make sure nobody's gonna ward my raptors, nobody's gonna invade my red level 1. Just protecting your jungle, very basic stuff. Now I'm just clearing, as you can see, always queue the big one. Uh, I don't really care about kiting. Maybe I should, but... I'm gonna wait a bit here. My expectation is that she probably warded my red buff, so top has no words. But instead, Viego knew I was gonna be there, and I trolled. So we died. Let's just look at the fight once again. Okay, so this was a pretty obvious gank on my part. Viego had 100% of the reason to be here. I'm more impressed by the fact that he was here before me. But I guess Viego has a fast clear. Now, I did flash here because I thought we were gonna turn on Viego. But he continued to focus the uh, Aurelia. Which maybe I should have flashed on Aurelia instead. But yeah, unfortunate. But even though we died like that, I'm getting spam ping back to the mirror. You know, the usual. People are tilted. So what do you do? You just mute them. Now, my camps are respawning, and when you die, it's really important. You don't really look for a fight, you just look for farming. So even though bots like this. I want to farm, but if they engage, and if that happens, you always join it. But always take into consideration that I really wanted to farm in this situation. But my camps are down, and I might as well just uh, join the fight. But yeah, now I want to go for Skullcrab. And just farm. It's really important that I don't overchase for kill bot lane. I just make sure I do the minimum amount to do anything. And I'm always gonna fast forward when I clear, so you guys can like, if you really care about my clear, you can slow the video down and watch it, but otherwise it doesn't matter. Now I'm staying here in case Aurelia is gonna dive Trindamir because she's two levels up and uh, yeah, he might have dove him. So I'm just walking up, my combo, I kill her. Now I know I see Hammerdinger coming, so I'm not afraid. And so I mean, he start walking on the bottom side, because I know he's gonna kill him no matter what. So I don't have to chase with him. He can kill him without me. So I'm, I'm gonna stop his escape path by going downwards. After that, I just want to ward his camps, because maybe something is up, I can track his farm easier now, the ward. I know my game plan is simple, I just want to farm, fight, recall, farm, fight, recall. So I just recalled, I want to farm or fight. I look mid, nah, not really. Let's farm. Bot lane is fighting, good for them. My top lane is getting destroyed, right? And mid is also dying and all that. But you know what? It doesn't matter. Here, I'm just gonna hold the wave because there's nobody mid. I'm never gonna let a cannon minion wave die for free. Now, I'm a bit like joking with him, like poking him a bit. You know, just trying to hit my Qs. Walking up. Getting the cannon. That's all I wanted. Now, I don't know what he's doing, but I counted that he doesn't have enough soldiers to kill me. 
So I knew he was gonna die. And he dies. And now I could do dragon, but I don't want to. Because I just farmed a bit and I fought a bit. Now it's time to recall. Okay, now it's either farm or fight. I'm probably gonna farm because look at my camps. Are up and I have no ult. I wanna path down to path towards the dragon. So I'm just staying here. I see Aurelia kill Trinamir, so I'm like seeing if she wants to greed and stay in the wave. I can get the wave for free. Oh, she didn't push fast enough. So I actually just wasted a bit of time here. Probably would have been uh, better to just farm. So that's one mistake I did. So I'm not 100% uh, the best player in the world, sadly. But yeah, that's a mistake I did. I only got one minion and I wasted like 30 seconds, which is really bad. I expected Aurelia to push faster. But yeah, in this situation, I have ult and they have three people but. So something really important is that instead of fighting where it's impossible to come back, I just fight where my team already is. And you see how I made sure to wait for my ult to come back before ganking top. And I also make sure I only ult for bounties. So if you press tab, enemy bot lane is 0-3. Okay, even if uh, I had ult and everything and I had path bot, right, there's no dragon, if he goes already bot, they have three enemies bot lane. Top, it's 2v1. If I go bot, I make it 3v3. Is that good? No. If my team can just survive 3v2 and run away, it's really worth for me to look for a play top and go for a 2v1 two, two for two, two v one. that makes it uh, able to get a kill. I'm just heading mid, just waiting. I feel like he's gonna go in. He, will, he actually goes in. Sadly, I'm like main blocked between Heredigger turrets and all this shit. But it's okay. I'll make sure my Q hits before flashing. And the reason I knew he was gonna go on him is because that's the power of just watching the lane, okay? When, I'm, when I was watching mid, I kept saying, I kept seeing Azir use his Q offensively. Okay, look. Azir kept using WQ. So what that means is that for the next 10 seconds, he cannot use WEQ, which is his, his that's his long escape. Because Azir has two escapes. He can just WE to run away or WEQ. And if he WEQs, he can go super far away. But with only w, uh, WQ, it's not that far away. But yeah, since he's so aggressive and Hammerdinger walked up, I'm like, okay, well, Azir is playing super aggressive. My Hammerdinger is mid HP. I know he's probably going to go in. And so even though there's like no situation where you're like, oh dude, Azir is gonna die, of course, like, he has no flash, whatever. It's like, yeah, you have to predict that he's gonna go in and all that. You just see playstyles. Also here, I'm pretty sure there's a specific timing that makes it so you can counter Azir wall, but I've never been able to do it. It's just really, really weird. But yeah. And also, see how I did not care about saving Hammerdinger? Okay, look, my Hammerdinger is 1-2. I'm 3-1, I have my eyes. If I flash on Azir and I don't get the kill, or if I waste my flash for no reason, it's going to be really bad. So I make sure I only flash if I can, one, get the kill 100% of the time by hitting my Q, like this. Or I'm going to flash if I can 100% of the time, uh, like, save Hammerdinger. Since it was 50-50, I just make, sh make sure to, like, just let Hammerdinger die, keep my Medjay stacks, and also this lets me get the kill myself. Because if, if I get the kill, right, my Medjay stacks go up. Hammerdinger, bro, he's playing well, he's not playing bad at all. But for now, I got a shutdown top lane, I'm gonna take the kill mid as well, because I rushed mid eyes. So in this game, if you notice, my top and mid were getting destroyed, so I thought, okay, you know what? I'm gonna go mid eyes, get some shutdowns, and we're gonna win the game. So one of my favorite tactics to actually win a game is go mid eyes when the enemy team has a lot of shutdowns, and uh, you just hope you can kill them. But that technique only works if you already have damage. And in this game, we already have damage. Like, Hammerdinger is high damage, and Trindamir is high damage. If my top laner was playing like, you know, Nasus. If my top, if my mid laner was playing Malzahar, I'm not gonna go mid eyes. Okay, I'm going mid eyes because my mid and top have high damage, and also we have an engaged support. So yeah, if my Sona, if my support was Sona, I would have never went for for that uh, mid eye. But yeah, now I recall and go back bot because I'm like, hmm, they almost got the plate. Enemy team is both low HP. Diego is probably gonna stop them, and you know what? He actually went bot. So even though my top side jungle spawned, and you should probably go top, 
Instead, I make the proactive decision of going bot. So it's really important. You always, always, always stay with your pathing, bot to top, bot to top, bot to top. Okay. And then at some point, you're going to be like, okay, actually, I got to go bot twice in a row. Because in this situation, if I go bot twice in a row, I know I can counter him. And especially in this part of the game where my next item is a lot of gold off, I'm not really close to anything. If I was only 100 gold off, I would have never went for that play. Because if I was if I was 100 gold off, it's just better to do my camps and then go for a guaranteed item. But because I'm so far away from my item, I just figure I just figure it's better to stay and go back bot lane to go for a fight. And now he's attacking this and he's dead. One of the biggest baits that you can do on Evelyn is that uh, people cannot see when you're in a bush and they're not in the bush. Even if the bush is worded, they have to be in the bush. So let's see it from his point of view. So this is how Miller sees it. He just sees a word getting placed down. He attacks. He attacks. And the second this goes off, I'm like, okay, he can't spot me anymore. I'm going to walk at him. And look where I am right now. I'm here. I walk. I walk. I'm right, I'm right here, right? I'm right here, but he doesn't see me. And he just sees a Q randomly. And he's like, oh. And he's dead. And the thing is, okay, the thing is, maybe he can use his uh, Q to stop me, but he's still slow, then I'm gonna just kill him with Q. Or I can ult backwards, or there's so many opportunities. And now that he's dead, I can just keep chasing for the Jinx. I got a kill. And see, we played for the free kill stop lane first, and after we got free kill stop lane, we decided we're gonna go for a bot play, and we, we it dive worked. Now, if you go... Just died randomly. And the thing is, when people do bad decisions, their team is also going to make bad decisions. And that, that, also, that also applies for yourself. So you got to be the person that's going to be like, okay, my team is making a bad play. I'm not going to follow them. So Viego saw his bot lane make a bad play. And he was like, okay, you know what? I'm going to try to help them. So because he tried to help them, it ended up him making a bad play. Even though he's maybe not a bad player. Let's say his bot lane is bad players, right? But he ended up being a bad player because he got influenced by his team. So it's really important you don't get influenced. And you make the mid team make as many bad players as possible. And it's going to be a snowball effect where their, their team that's also good players. Like Viego killed top, mid, etc. Right? He's actually not a bad player. But that makes it so uh, they start doing mistakes because of their team. And at, the point, at this point of the game, I'm going to tell you guys... My team wanted to FF. Like, this game, the reason I'm showing this video is because this entire game, my train timer was tilted from the level 1 or the level, like, 4 bot lane. My mid was tilted because he's, he's like, also 1-2, 1-4, right? And the FF vote is going off and it's always, like, 3-2, th uh, 3-2. Two, three, two. And, like, I'm really scared. I'm like, yo, please don't FF. Like, this is such a free game. Let me carry. Just chill, guys. Just chill. Please don't FF. And, uh, I mean, I'm not typing that, but I'm just hoping it. But I'm saying, like, guys, I can carry it. Trust me. And now I see a zero overextending like this. And I'm going to go punish him. And again, it's because we see them do Herald, right? And instead of going Herald and stopping them. Because what's the point of stopping them? And we go top lane. Okay, let's, let's say we go top lane. It's going to be against Irelia, Milio, Viego, and Jinx. So these four people, right? And if we go top lane, it's going to be Trinamur, Heimerdinger, and by the time we get there, it's gonna be like me, and then this guy, and then Rel. It's gonna take way too long to get there, so it's probably gonna be like 2v4, or maybe 2v3 if I had went top instead of bot. So instead of going for the 2v, or 4v, for the 4v3 advantage on the enemy, I go for the 3v1 advantage to us, and I don't care about a random Herald. Herald's only purpose is to kill turrets, okay? They already got one turret here. Okay, they have one turret here, one turret here. We have no turrets left. So, if I can get the equivalent of a turret while they get Herald, it's going to be worth it. So, I'm heading bot. Luckily enough, Azir just walks at me. And by going bot, it makes it so my smolder can push lane, and they can get the turret. And so, basically, they got Herald, which is basically a turret, and we also got a turret from bot lane. And now, I joined the fight top, because... Irelia has been top, and I see that they did the Herald. So in a bit they're going to do Herald, and I know that. 
And I figure, dude, if they're doing Herald and Aurelia is top, that means Viego is on Herald and there's no Viego to stop her. So the reason I didn't go top in the first place is because I was a bit scared. If Viego is waiting in a bush like in my jungle or somewhere here, I'm gonna die for sure. Like there's no way I survive. But if there's Jinx waiting, I can just... Okay. Worst case scenario, I ult away, right? Viego, I cannot ult away. Viego, he stuns me. If I ult away, he ults on me. He can flash on me. I'm gonna die. Melio, who cares? I can just walk at him. He can kill me away. Whatever. I can walk away afterwards. So I saw Melio. I saw Aurelia. In that fraction of a second, you have to watch your minimap at all times to see that Melio is there. Now I see Melio is there for sure. And now I know. It's 2v3 because Viego is not there. He did Herald. It says it in all chat. So because of that, right? I always take fights. Where we have a number advantage. And I W Irelia and I go Milio. Because I know if I chase Milio, I'm not gonna be able to kill him. He can just kill me away. So I W Irelia, I kill Milio to scare him away and use his cooldowns on himself instead of Irelia. Because if, instead of shielding Irelia, he's gonna shield himself. And then I charm her. I Q E ult. I make sure to do it fast as possible to make sure that I dodge her stun and her ult. And I just one shot her just like that. Because Aurelia cannot use her W during her ult. So if you, if you can ult at the same time that she's using ult, so during that cast time, she can't use W to stop your ult. And now I'm going to do red buff. But I'm scared, because Vico's there. Oh. Okay, in this situation, I knew Vico was there. And the reason I knew Vico was there is because Vico has just done Herald, right? And I'm fighting top lane. Now imagine you're Viego and you see your, your, your Aurelia fighting top lane. And you know that she's fed, right? Your first instinct is going to be, I'm going to try to help her. So he's probably walking somewhere here. Like I'm, He's pretty he's probably here. Let's see. Yeah, he's here. Nice. So while he's going this, I'm thinking like, okay, like it's 3v2 right now. But where's Viego? Where's Viego? And he saw me being 1 HP. He saw Trinamir being 1 HP. He knows we can die. So I'm like, hmm, he's probably going to invade me. So what I do is I make sure to walk here as close as possible while only checking with the like uh, my passive circle. So the way you check with your passive circle is you walk next to a bush and you just spam click like this. Right? Click, 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 click. And you click back and forth, back and forth, because that way you do micro movements. And you're like, oh, the second you, you get spotted, you know that he's there. And I can just walk away. Now, I don't like do it completely, but look at this. I just... Keep out of vision. And now I know that he's somewhere here. And I know. And I'm very patient. I never walk into him thinking, oh, you know, I can maybe outplay him. I have flash, whatever. No. I just stay out of the the, the Viego broom. I stay out of it. And I combo. And also the reason why I wait until using E when I charm someone is because... Charm makes it so they walk towards you, right? But if you QE instantly and you're on them, they're gonna just not move, right? So if I Q, I walk at him, see the charm duration, I wait for a full charm to go off, and then I use the E damage. So basically, I use the entire charm. So if he wants to ult away afterwards, he can't ult away because he's, he's right there. Imagine he survived, right? If he was there instead, he could just ult the wall, and I have to flash or ult or something to follow him. I'm not, I don't want to use flash for... If you go, that's 1-2, right? He was 1-2 at that time. So instead, I make sure to wait as long as possible before using E. There's just like little tricks you can use to get better on Evelyn. And okay, I just poke her. My intention was just to take her to his jungle. I do it fast. I don't really care about uh, going for red buff. Now Azir completely trolled that. I just fast forward, go back to only our vision. So now I see how much gold I have. 2,275. Which means if I do one camp, I'm going to be able to have Rabbitons. But since I'm topside and there's no objectives up, instead of recalling, I'm going to do all my jungle. Because why not? There's no objectives on the map anyways. If there was a Dragon, or Herald, or Baron, or even a turret I can go for, okay? Any objective, then I would insta-recall after red buff, get Rabbitons, and go to the objective. 
But because there's no objective, I'm just gonna farm my jungle. Like, that's how you win harder and harder. Now, of course, I kinda wanna just recall here, but my Hammer Niguri is spam pinging me, and I'm like, bro, I wanna recall. Somehow, it worked out. Which was really surprising, honestly. And I wanted to chase him, but at the same time, I was like, Meh. Like, I don't want to use my ult, I'm a bit scared of bushes. And when this happened, I was like, okay, good, good, dude. I'm done chasing. And that chase was like, kind of a bad play, because they're probably coming towards us. Yeah, if Viego was bot lane instead of top lane, I'm, I might have been, been, been forced to use my ult. Right, so that chase was also a mistake. So second mistake that I do. It's also why I like to review myself, because I can see how much time I'm wasting and how many plays I go for that do actually don't work out, right? Uh, that's also why you should review yourself. And I'm telling you guys like what to look for as well. So look for when you're wasting time and look for when you chase for no reason. Look for when you're being inefficient. Like look for every gank that you went for that did not work out. Look for every every play that you, did go that you went for that did not work out. So the first play of the game, top side against Aurelia, I went to kill her, right? But Viego was there. Why did it not work out? It did not work out because Vago predicted that I was going to gank top. So he made sure to camp the bush because his Aurelia had super pushed. That's also why you should only path to strong lanes. Because if Trinamir was stronger, then we'd be able to win the fight. But because me and Trinamir are like both like uh, not the strongest champions early game. Even though, I mean, Tr Trinamir is pretty strong early game. But Aurelia is kind of crazy at all games. At all points. And so our 2v2 is weaker. So top lane was like a really risky gank, and I should have instead been waiting to see uh, if, like, Viego wanted to gank. Because if I was if I was the one counter ganking, then for sure it would have been better of a play. And here I'm just waiting, trying to save my team. I forgot what happened here actually. Let's see. Oh, uh, yeah, I just W her. Look at this. <laughs> okay, I mentioned to disrespect to tilt her. Because I'm pretty sure she was typing in all chat. So even though that was not worth it, game Mikelly, game like game Mikelly, like for the game. But that was worth it mentally for the Aurelia. I completely broke her mental. Because look at what I did. Just observe with the disrespect. Observe. This Hammerdinger has been typing in all chat this entire game. He's been he's been saying, haha, my jungler is saving me. Haha. Like you cannot kill me. Haha. Look, I doubly her. She knows I'm coming. Okay, I'm gonna pause here. I'm gonna give a little prayer for Aurelia. Aurelia, bless your soul. Proc the charm. Walk into her wall on purpose. Press S. Stop moving. Boom. Bye bye. Thumbs up. Like, I made sure that, that they saw me. Thumbs up. And so that's how you break the enemy team's mental. So here, if I was Aurelia, um, I'd probably leave the game. Of course, I would never leave the game because I never surrender and I never leave the game. But, um, yeah. If anyone else was was her, they would lose the game for sure. Props to the Aurelia, though, for not going AFK. So I guess nobody else would AFK. But I did break her mental. Okay, I'm just rambling on. So I'm going to go back to the game now. Uh, now I'm going to just go mid, go for free kills. What's really cool about, like, having these items is that you're super fast with Magi's, Lichbane, and... Um, Relentless Hunter and Boots as well give you movement speed. So I basically have like so much movement speed. Let's see how much movement speed I have. Okay, I'm in combat, so it does not work. Okay. Okay, look at this movement speed. 500, basically. 500. So I'm just basically walking at her. I'm 120 movement speed faster than her. I am so fast. Now, I don't really care about this Q because I don't really want to fight as well. Again, we're making a 2v1 play bot. What did we learn about number advantage? Always go for number advantage. So in this game, because, I mean, in this situation, because we have two people but I want to like, try to pick off Aurelia when she's a bit alone, like that that place mid. But when she starts grouping with her team, I immediately give up. I don't try to over chase or anything like that. I'm about to getting 2v1, basically. It was a bit unfortunate, but it's all good. A W Aurelia here. Again, I'm just like going for something. 
I full comboed her. We'll take it. Not the best fight, honestly, but... I know we have so much damage, it doesn't matter. I'm playing super safe, and I have flash. I only want to use flash for party targets. So I don't really care about this situation here. Like, when I have flash and magis, I usually use my flash only defensively. Also, guys, if you're wondering... The best runes right now are these ones. These ones. You don't go Gathering Storm and Absolute Focus anymore. If you can get a lead... Oh, sorry, my Spotify activated. Anyways. You don't get a lead... If you don't get a lead early game, you're gonna lose the game. So you basically have to build AP. Or Sword Shoes. But I think AP is more consistent. Because Sword Shoes, sometimes... It feels really bad to have your main item delayed. And having that early Lich Bane just feels really good. Or that early Magi's, or that early Rabadons. Any item you want to go. And for my build that I like to go, it's mostly Magi's Rush into either Lich Bane or Rabadons. And it depends on how much gold you have. So basically, if you recall, and you have 1250 gold on your second back, you go Rabadons. If you recall, you have 900, which is both the two most common options. 900, you go for Lich Bane. Because you don't want to go out of base with 900 gold of, out of the... Like, not used. It just feels horrible. So, again, I'm going bot. My Hammer Dinger is like the, the master of the baits. Boop. And at this point of the game, the way to end the game is just to go for turrets. So, how see how we, I'm keep, I keep going bot lane? Because bot lane has the last turret left. So, I want this turret. Also, in case you didn't know, having minions lower armor from the turret. That's why you cannot kill turrets without having minions next to it. So I tanked the turret shot for the minion, and then I walked back to make the so that Hammerdinger turret tanks it. Just as long as there is a minion alive, that's actually not a Hammerdinger turrets don't count as minions, by the way. But uh, yeah, I mean, he goes in this bush. He exploded. And now we got all the turrets. So what's left to do is to go Baron. So I just ping Baron, and I'm like, okay guys, let's go Baron. And see, I'm the first one at Baron. If you ping Baron, right? Like, if you have the idea, guys, let's go Baron. But you don't go Baron, nothing happens. You're gonna lose the game, like, nobody's gonna do the Baron. Nobody's gonna be like, okay, dude, you're not going to Baron, but I'm gonna go to Baron. No, you have to go to Baron while pinging it, and then your team is gonna join you. So I'm just gonna stay this in this approximation for the rest of the game. Also, like, I'm basically full build. Even if I farm my entire jungle... Let's say, best case scenario, it gives me 500 gold. Okay, it doesn't, it will not give me 500 gold. With 500 extra, extra gold, I'm gonna buy, like, another m -tone, you know? Like, it doesn't matter. It's not the time to farm right now. I'm, like, kinda, I'm kind of capped on items for a, a long time. So my goal is just to fight and do Baron and end the game. Like, my only power spike is getting 40 more AP. And again, this is, this is the, 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 the trick where... I use the plant. So this, okay, this is a bit of a of a like stretch, but I like to do that. You have to like understand the concept, okay? So let's say you're on the enemy team and someone used the plant, right? You wanna walk towards where the plant is to see if like they're gonna clear the words, to defend your words, etc. Right? That's what Melio thought. So um I know that he wants to do that. So what I do is I'm, I like get the plant used. They like we can see this word. So I know that there's a really good chance that someone's gonna be here. And I see Milio like this, and I'm like, oh, Milio's gonna come. I go in the bush, and again, look, look what they look what they see, bro. Look, look at this zero point twenty five speed. Yeah, zero point twenty five speed. I killed him in the one quarter of a second. Let's see it in real time. And I just appeared onto him, right? I just appeared. So for him it was magic, but for me it was skill. And map awareness. So again, we see Melio, we walk at him, let's see it in real time. He does not see me, he does not see me, bye bye. And now we got a pick, and we go Baron. Always go Baron after a pick. You can go Baron to bait them to like fight you, but most of the time as Evelyn, Baron is a really bad spot to fight, because there's just not a lot of opportunities to like walk at places. Like if you want to do Baron, you're gonna stuck in the pit, so you can't really fight. Or you can be on the sides, but if you're on the sides, this place is really bad because, like, let's say 
Azure can go over the wall and then I have to flash after him, right? Vehicle can, can go over the wall or stuff like that. Or like, this place has a lot of bushes, so maybe you're gonna lose vision and it's gonna be hard to kill. But yeah, we just focus Baron. I know someone is in the bush because of my passive. I don't really chase into them. As your turret reveals you as soon as, as it's pressed, it doesn't have to be up. In case you're wondering. As you're here, randomly. I get hit. I'm like, okay, bye bye. I ulted onto him because I could E him and he kill him. Or I could just ult and he does this and I, I have to survive. But now what's really funny is that as Evelyn moment, I know that they killed them and now that they're probably happy. Boop. <laughs> Always re-engage guys. Always go back in. If you can, go back in. Okay? Don't be traumatized. A lot of people like coach, they get traumatized. So basically, they would ult away here, right? They would do the first part. But instead of going back in, they would just run away and recall. Bro, you're Evelyn, you have infinite HP. Just go back in, go back in. And here, really important, look. Q, W instantly. Look at her movement speed. 179. Did you see that? No. Let's see her Let's see her point of view. Again, I'm showing you their point of view because I want you guys to, to know how it feels like to play against Evelyn. Because most of you guys, you play Evelyn. And you, you don't actually, like, know how it feels like to play against her. Against a good one, at least. So look what she sees. Boop. And she's dead. Where's the counterplay? Where's the counterplay, right? There's no counterplay. You just walk at her. At her. She has like zero seconds to react. She cannot dodge it because you're invisible. She doesn't know where it's coming from. It's over. All, all she sees is a Q and she gets slowed. Her movement speed drops by 200 and she's dead. And because, again, your movement speed is like over 450... Right? And home speed is like less than 150, or like 150 basically. You can just walk at her in one second and kill her. That's like Evelyn's gap closer. If you if you don't go rocket belt, you have to do this combo of QW really really often. And that's how I won the game, and I also have 20 kills, and I, I didn't even realize I had 20 kills at that point. I was like, okay, I mean, I'm just having fun, you know, I'm killing them, disrespecting them. And I, I press tab, and I'm like, oh wait, I'm 20 and 1. And we won the game. Oh yeah, my top is 4-5, my mid is 2-4. At least my bottom was good players. So, in conclusion, if you're good, the only thing that matters is but diff. Thank you for watching the video. Like, comment, subscribe. And, uh, dude, if you have any questions, uh, you can uh, do them in the comments. I'm going to respond to every single one of them, as usual. I try to respond. Guys, I try to respond to as many comments as I can. But sometimes there's too many comments. And also, I might just make a video about like all the, the questions that you guys frequently ask. So, because I keep getting asked the same questions. So, I think I'm going to do that in the next video. Let me know if you guys want to uh, watch that. But yeah, thanks for watching. And have a nice one. Bye-bye.